substantial brick houses in Tudor style with plenty of space around them, just nine dwellings per acre. And here it is today. Admittedly, the Second World War interrupted progress of the neo-Tudor style. Yet here can be found black and white, timber framed, period houses, incorporating, well, any period that you might choose. Tudor Village is without doubt the posh end of Jaywick, which many inhabitants prefer to call West Clacton. It's their way of trying to dissociate themselves from the older part by the sea wall. Throughout Jaywick, defiance is the rule of the game. The difference between each area is apparent at once. Down here in Brooklands and Grasslands, the housing ratio is not 9, but 29 per acre. Behind the facade of paint on these houses is the original wooden chalet. All were designed for holiday use only, but over the years, more and more people have chosen to live here permanently. The majority are still freeholders of their little plots. The streets in Brooklands are all glorious reminders of the heyday of the motoring industry in the 1930s. Within the original concept of the place, there was no long-term plan for change or development. For 45 years, the occupants were happy to collect their water from pavement standpipes and to use Elsan chemical toilets, which were emptied daily. It was part of Jaywick's old-fashioned eccentricity. This was still the sunniest part of Britain. The sea cost nothing and was always there to refresh both body and soul. What really mattered was the sense of freedom from authority. A simple life engendered a defiance against anyone who might wish to take Jaywick from them. During the night of the 31st of February, 1953, a terrible flood struck the east coast. The combination of a force 10 southerly storm with a surge tide caused appalling loss of life. All low-lying parts of eastern England were affected. The next day, when the worst of the gale had abated, the grisly search for bodies began. Though Jaywick had already experienced several floods, the residents were quite unprepared for the scale of this disaster. Forty people drowned that night, mostly the elderly and retired. John and Mary Reeves will never forget the nightmare of trying to save their children. We heard a funny noise, a shh noise, and an uncanny feeling, so I jumped out of bed and put my feet straight in the water. But I got to the window and pulled the curtains back and it was a shock of my life because the windows was about four or five foot feet above the ground and the water was right to the top of that. John lifted the children up into the um, loft and then he grabbed all the mattresses and put them against the doors but then the water was well in. It's still coming through and the water was gradually rising, rising, rising and the worrying part was I thought, when's it going to stop? We just sat up there and told the stories and sang because we don't want the children to hear the people screaming. And we all prayed. But it, uh, it stayed at a certain level, about five or six feet up. And it stayed at that. We stayed there all night. The lifeboat man got in and helped the children through the window and then he got us through the window, but this knows how. And he took us up the road in the boat. They got us some clothes to because all our clothes were soaking wet through. And they even gave us one of the nice front bedrooms to sleep in that night. But we didn't sleep very well that night. We could hear the roar of the sea. And we're still thinking of Jaywick. And yet, Jaywick was able to put itself back together again. The same chalets which had floated away were returned to their individual plots and raised up on brick pillars. If anything, the floods strengthened the community spirit, the comradeship and resilience. But a further 36 years have since passed and a great many of the little chalets are really beginning to show their age. 
while a few have been demolished, others are now providing homes for the very poorest who can find none cheaper elsewhere. It's believed that over 1,000 people now occupy Brooklands, many in distinctly substandard housing. One day, a chalet can be like this, and the next morning, beyond redemption. In the event of fire, not even the asbestos in the roof prevents devastation. But the views of outsiders have never been shared by residents here. For them, Jaywick is home, and home is where the heart is. In the very middle of Brooklands is Sandy's Club, the unofficial social centre used by all who can afford the price of a pint. And Saturday night is always family night out. The folk here are quick to close ranks against criticism. They're well aware of the sort of prejudice held against them from outside. But being traditionally independent and outspoken, they're well able to defend themselves. We've still got a decent, crowd, good crowd down there. We might have one or two snides, but that's, you get that everywhere. Yeah, I mean, there is a thriving community here. I don't know, but there's lots of pregnant people around. There's, there's going to be a lot of young children soon. There's a lot of good people and a few bad ones. Only a few, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we were down here before the war for our holidays and stuff, our holidays down there. It's when every penny when we first moved down here, we were skinned. Or we had to live on without pension. The more affluent people were in the 30s, much more affluent, because, um, well, as I said, it was a rich man's paradise down here. That was a wet, dirty wig in place, really. Hey, double, double! In the club, all seems well enough. It's a night off from any hardships which may be endured during the week. The world can soon be put to rights. Solutions seem easy and dreams possible. In the clear light of day, the realities of Jaywick's problems seem all too obvious. The holiday resort of 60 years ago was never designed to be anyone's permanent accommodation. So why has the local authority done nothing about it? 1971, and in January, Clacton Urban District Council declared that the Brooklands and Grassland areas of Jaywick would be compulsorily purchased and demolished. But the local authority had miscalculated the people's determination to stay. Eventually, the residents hired a top barrister who won the day at a public inquiry. The long battle caused great distrust and unhappiness among freeholders. There's a bunch of unopposed there. Leave it. Yay. Not our one. Now, we mustn't bring politics into this. Uh, uh, well, I, politics are very much part of it. Well, I am, in fact, uh, on the, I am a member of the Clacton Urban District Council. I should be ashamed to say that. And, and I supported the no, resolution that um, man, what she's getting now. gave the order for the clearance. Do you want money or do you want to stick to the I don't want money, I want to stop there. You want to stick to the place? And I don't want a foxy council place. Tendring District Council is now the authority. Their chief executive, David Mitchell Gears, assesses the effect of losing that battle. A very big public inquiry was held and at the end of that the minister decided against the council and we didn't get our clearance area. So, come 1974 and later, we were faced with the problem that we had an area that was totally unsatisfactory from our point of view. We'd gone as far as we could to resolve the real problem and were unable to go any further. So we had to face the reality of what to do. And you will see that a number of properties there have continued to be occupied. And from our point of view, unless you solve the problem of the road system, you will never resolve the problem of Jaywick. Though the public inquiry did lead to water and mains drains, the fundamental problem is really poverty. Cheap housing in the sun is very attractive when you have little else. Jaywick was always a place of happy holiday memories, but now there's a generation of children for whom this is home. Their only escape is a cheap holiday elsewhere. The newly formed youth club has nowhere to meet but the local pub. 
Maxine Green has been sent here by Save the Children Fund. She has gathered together the active, caring people to coordinate self-help activities. I mean, we don't want masses of money floating around, do we, really? No, I mean, if it's going in the bank anyway, if it's going to be held for them, yeah, what they don't spend can be brought back. Yes, that's right. Yeah. But you, if you say that you're going to all these places, then... Yeah. Can we? 15. The prospects for these young people are not good. Unemployment in Brooklands is believed to be well over 20%. Close examination of all the child welfare reports shows a much sadder picture than that painted by most of the inhabitants. Maxine Green is doing her utmost to help people understand the predicament of Jaywick's worst off. The shelter gave rather a, um, a report in 1977 where it, it lists it as being one of the worst housing conditions that they have ever experienced. Now since then there is drainage and there are, there is uh, not stand pipes to, on the corners of the roads. But the houses are ten years older, the roads are ten years shabbier uh, and, um, and there hasn't been really a great improvement in that. There was a health survey done last year by Nottingham University and uh, Jaywick scored worse on four out of six counts in Tower Hamlets. And when one hears figures like that, which are done independently from agencies, you, you realise that the degree of hardship is really quite considerable here. The Jaywick Sands Freeholders Association was founded in 1934 to take care of vital local services, sea defence, sewage and drinking water. Everyone had to be a paid-up member. And we'll go on to number five. But since a new seawall, mains drains and household taps have all been provided by outside agencies, their membership and authority within the estate have diminished. Nor can they raise the huge amounts of private cash needed to rebuild the crumbling network of roads. Though it was the JSFA who beat the bulldozers in 1971, they face a far greater threat from within. There are more and more children in Jaywick and they need a better place to live. To raise money for their own youth club, they held a much needed beach clean. Though the effect on the beach is only cosmetic, it's hoped that the effect on the kids will be to encourage them to help themselves. Failure to agree to one strategy is traditional in Jaywick. To solve their most deep-rooted problems, they must all learn to pull together. Now that so many chalets are used for full-time occupation, the majority of visitors to Brooklands only stay a few hours for the Sunday market. I guarantee you there's not many people walking down this market today who would think of seeing a set like that on a market stall down at Jaywick Sands. Get your woodpeckers 50 pence, girl. Come on now, 50 pence. The bargains have to be seen to be believed. Can I make one of you the envy of the crowd there? And instead of charge, I guarantee you, seriously, what you're looking now with the coffee set is in the excess of about five and a half hundred pounds. For the JSFA who rent the land, the market is a useful little earner. For the poorer local residents, the cheapest way to get by. The radio leads are not stolen. They just haven't been paid for yet. Hey, yeah. Though the Sunday market brings theatrical colour and the bustle of life, it leaves nothing permanent behind. 185. I will even charge you £185 pounds for the whole lot. 59 pieces in rough, well, in all English bone shine. If I lose out shopping now to clear them, I'll take £150 pounds for the entire lot. Along the seawall to the west of Brooklands, following the privately owned and often dilapidated access road, one comes eventually to the most surprising part of Jaywick, the caravan site. Here are neat, orderly rows of smart, expensive caravans, each solely for holiday accommodation with all mod cons. The site is owned and run by Brian Matthews, a well-respected local magistrate whose views on the future of Jaywick are quite clear. It's an enormously costly operation to, to uh, raise the standards of, uh, of Jaywick uh, to those uh, acceptable elsewhere uh, would, would cost many millions of pounds. Uh, it's, it's, it's such a a large, painful nettle 
that both authorities, that is the immediate local authority, the Tendring, Tendring District Council and the Essex County Council, have been fearful to grasp it. With any community, and it is a very close community, that's what is remarkable and perhaps unique in, the, in this area, is that it is a, a community, often a warring community, but it is a community. And with any community, the, the best help uh, it can receive is, is what it gives itself. The only reason that Jaywick survives at all is because individuals have continuously kept up their own homes. Put two or more plots together and a decent sized new house can be built. But most are still the old chalets improved. Modern property values could possibly return Jaywick to its former fashionable glory, something that many of the older residents have never forgotten, the original community spirit. But you find a lot of people down here who are all from Bethnal Green, Marlin, Hackney, and all that area, majority of them. Free and easy, isn't it? Come down here, do as you like, grow me potatoes, me beans. People are happy. Of course they Everyone's happy. Yeah. I mean, I've known this lady for years. Everybody's happy. Yeah. Oh, no, it grows on you. The longer you're here, the longer it grows on you. And I'm 87. Ah. Come from Dagenham. They can down to where? What, what more can you want for a peaceful place like this? I take pictures of it. They stand, they stand there and mar, mar the arts way and that, you know. If everybody got together down here, as they should do, instead of fighting this and doing that, this would be better than collecting if it wanted to. Of course, it never will be, will it? <laughs> We're the happy ones. That's it. If there was all, if there was, if there was all like us, it'd be a better place down here. The Bishop of Colchester, Michael Vickers, feels that community spirit is not necessarily enough. What we want to do is to get together with Save the Children and to put in a, a community worker who can really take the whole business on from here and particularly can use the local initiatives, the people who have a concern for the fact that children have nowhere to go to after school and so forth. And the second thing is, I think we've got to try and get the local authority and others who have talked about it for a long while actually to do something. And so the morning has arrived that the youth club has been waiting for. It's holiday time, not in Jaywick, but the Isle of Wight. When did you wake up this morning? We are up early. Six. Six o'clock. What did your mum say? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> This is an important and exciting day for all ages. Everyone has made careful preparations. This holiday is vital to many. The prospect of only one week's parting somehow reveals the emotional strains of this close community. Richard, Dean and Sarah. Brett, Ian and Michelle. It's Colin, hoped that Alice these kids' Daphne. happiest memories will be of holiday time in a faraway Ian, place by the sea, Michelle. where the everyday worries Brett. and cares of home yeah, life can be Daphne, forgotten, Michelle, where the sun Daphne. will shine that little bit brighter. Joe East. Any hardships will be overlooked on, then, for the sake of the holiday. A magical place whose value is greatest in the memory. A place one might dream of returning to. But if you tried to live there, the magic would disappear. The sort of place that Jaywick Sands used to be. Mm -hmm.